What is up guys? In this video we're going to be talking about the decision tree which is another fairly simple classification algorithm in Python and to get started I have this diagram right here that I took off of Google and this just displays a very simple decision tree and here we're going to decide whether we should lend the car to our friend or not. So the first thing we check is is this our friend? If it's not our friend we will say no. And if it is our friend, we will go to the next question. Is this the first time our friend asks us about our car? If it is no, then we're going to say no. And if it is the first time, we will check whether our friend with its previous experience was a good experience. If it was a bad experience, we will say no. If it was with a good experience, we will go ahead and lend our friend the car. So as you can see, the decision tree is a certain way to use if else statements and they should not be confused because one is used for predictions and business and the other one is used for creating code and yes if you break it down to the very basics it will end up being an if else block but the decision tree goes much further than that and actually calculates probability for each one of these blocks but anyway let's go ahead and close this chart now that you have a general idea of how the decision tree works and we are going to create our own data to decide whether we want to buy some wine or not depending on the score the price and the kind of wine so let's get started with the imports immediately by typing import numpy as mp then we should import pandas as pd then from sklearn dot model selection we want to import train test split and again we're not going to have enough data for this experiment so we will not be using this but I'm just including it in case you decide to add more data because it's very important to split your data so that you do not end up with a biased model. But after that, we are going to import from sklearn the pre-processing label encoder, which allows us to convert strings into integers, which are much easier to process. And finally, from sklearn, we will import a tree. Then we should go ahead and create a function called wine decision so we can decide whether to buy the wine or not. And the first thing we should include is the wine type. And to keep it simple, we're just going to include red or white wine. Of course, there are hundreds of varieties, but we need to keep this simple. So we will also include the score of the wine and the price of the wine. Next, we should go ahead and create this raw data, which is going to equal a map. And the first element is going to be the wine data. So we're going to create an empty list. And inside here, we're going to insert the value of red and we're going to duplicate this three times. Then we're going to insert the value of white with a comma and also duplicate it two more times. So we end up with a total of six elements in the wine section and three of them are red and the other three are white. Then we should also go ahead and score this wine. So the first score is going to be a high score. Then we're going to give the second one a high score as well. Then the third red is going to have a low score. The first white is going to have a high score, followed by a low score, and finally another low score. Then we have to go ahead and include the price of each wine. So we will go ahead and first say the first wine that has a high score is going to have a high price. Then the second wine with a high score is going to have a low price followed by a low price for the wine with a low score. And then with the first white wine, we will give it a low price for a high score and a high price for a low score, followed by a low price for a low score again. And the final key is going to tell us whether we bought the wine or not based on the prices and the score. So let's go ahead and create another empty list. So the first one we bought because it was delicious, regardless of the price. The second one we bought because the price was low and the quality was high. And the third one we said no, because we do not like low quality wine, regardless of the low price. Then for the white wine, we have a high score with a low price. So we said yes. And for the last two, we said no because the price was high and the quality was low. And we also had a low price for a low quality wine. So essentially we built a person who only drinks good quality wine. Then we should go ahead and create a data frame. So PD data frame, and we're going to insert the raw data. Then just as in our naive base example, we have to go ahead and encode our data. So we're going to create a label encoder, which is going to equal the label encoder. And first we're going to encode the wine followed by encoding the score and encoding the price. And the first one is going to be le.fit transform. And that's going to be the data frame at the index of wine. Then we can go ahead and duplicate this twice. And in the second one, it's going to be the data frame of score. And the third one is going to be the data frame of price. 
then we also must encode whether we bought the wine or not. So en bot is going to equal le fit transform. And inside here, we will do df dot bot. Next, let's go ahead and print all of these. So, so here we're going to go ahead and type in wine decision. One, two, three, it doesn't matter. Then we should go ahead and right click and click on run. And you'll notice that we'll get all of the values that we've inserted and they will have been encoded. Now we can go ahead and delete these print statements and we are going to create a translation, which is just going to be a map that tells us which one of these values means what. So we can use it later and make the program much easier to understand. So translation is going to equal a dictionary and red is going to be the value of zero. As you can see here, the first three represent red and the second three represent white. And then we're going to go ahead and add white here, which is going to be represented by the number of one. Then a high score is going to be represented by the value of zero and a low score is going to be represented by the value of one. Then we also have yes, which is represented by zero and no, which is represented by one. And as always, if you're confused on how I got these values, you can just go back to your raw data and you'll notice that as you can see here, these three correspond to these three red. Then the next three for the next array correspond to these three, which means one is low and zero is high. And the same thing happened for price over here. And finally, we have two yeses and one no, which correspond to one, one and zero. So that's exactly where I got these values from. And then we have to go ahead and create some features, which is going to equal a list of a zip, which will combine our encoded wine, our encoded score and our encoded price. And below that, we can go ahead and create our X and Y, which is going to equal a NumPy array of our features. And the Y is going to equal a NumPy array of the encoded bot. And below that, I'm just going to copy and paste our train test split data. And again, you should use this only if you have some more data to work with. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Next, we should go ahead and create a decision tree classifier. So we're just going to type in CLF for classifier, and that's going to equal a tree decision tree classifier. Then we will call our classifier and call fit, which is going to have the values of X and Y. And in case you have training and test data, insert your train X here and your train Y here. And I'm going to copy and paste this one in as well. In case you do have data to work with, go ahead and insert your test data here for X and your test data here for Y. But below that, we're going to go ahead and finally make the prediction to whether we should drink the wine or not or buy the wine or not. And that's going to equal our classifier dot predict. And inside here, we're going to refer to our translation. And that's going to be at the key of wine type for the first one. Then we want to refer to our translation at the key of the score. And finally, our translation at the key of the price. So this is just going to convert the strings we enter in here into numbers for this prediction to process. And also remember this has to be inside a two dimensional array. So just add those there. And we want to format the result, which is going to equal the integer of the prediction at the value of zero. Then we can go ahead and print the value to see whether it is true or false. And we should also print this in a human readable language. So we will print a string that says, I buy the wine. And we will only print this if the value is equal to one, which means yes. Else we will create a string that says, no wine for me today. So let's go ahead and take these fake values away. And the first thing we will specify is the wine type. We'll say we are drinking red or we want to buy a red wine, but the score is low and the price is high, which in theory should lead us to not buy the wine. But let's go ahead and test whether it gives us that response. So as you can see, we ended up with the value of zero, which means no. And that also means we're not going to buy the wine because the score was low and the price was high. And as we mentioned earlier, our person does not like low quality wine especially if the price is high. But if we go ahead and type in the score is high and the price is high, and we change this to white wine, you're going to notice that our person is going to buy the wine. So we have successfully created a decision tree that goes through all of these scenarios and calculates the probability of whether the person will buy the wine or not. And the more of these options you have, the better the outcome. But of course, there's also a limit to that. If you have millions of possibilities, your model will not perform that good. So it's important you find the correct number and you experiment with the amount of options and background data so that you can get some proper predictions. 
But of course, if the price is low and the score is high, he will buy it immediately. But uh, with that being said, I believe that's all I wanted to show you regarding the decision tree in Python. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to look at them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you in the next video.